This week, the NFL is picking up steam. The Commanders got a real one. NBA Media Day. One stars in the news. One star moments. Too many cooks in the kitchen. Enjoy this episode. One star recruits listeners. Don't skip a beat. Go to 500level.com right now to get all the best running back shirts in the NFL. It's the year of the running back. Derrick Henry, Ravens, Kenneth Walker III, 30 fantasy points this week. Saquon Barkley, Eagles cartoon shirts, mystery shirts for $10. Get 20% off everything on the site with the discount code DK and RIP at checkout. That's D K A N D R I P. 500level.com. Let's go. Yo, aloha. Welcome to the podcast. October is here. Playoff baseball. Basketball is back. Rip's birthday right around the corner. Halloween, your favorite holiday right around the corner. Any requests for your birthday, Rip, off the bat? Any dreams? Any requests? Man, I got to think about that because my mom texted me yesterday. She's always on top of birthday gifts. Even even in my 40s, she's trying to get me stuff early, and I can't think of anything. So that's going to be my uh, my one goal this week is to think of uh, birthday gift ideas. I don't really need anything, to be honest, but I got to come up with something for like 20 bucks off Amazon. I got to do that every year. Listeners, get in, get in Rip's text messages in the DM. Give them some ideas, some stuff. Ideas for me, Rip, right off the bat. I would love it if you looked into... A couple upgrades at your microphone and your headset. I'll send you some examples you can take a look at. Let me know which one works for you. Maybe you have a gift coming your way, Rip. If you had to get one 500 level shirt for yourself for your birthday as a gift, which way, what direction you're going? I got to go with Jaden Daniels. He's carrying me in fantasy football so far. He was He's a one-star recruits alumni. There's no way I'm not getting a Jaden Daniels shirt if I got one shirt to pick. People out there getting a little crazy with their 500 level. I saw a listener a listener sent me a screenshot of a Jawan Jennings 500 level shirt. Who would have ever thought? They literally have everything, bro. You're the guy at the Jawan Jennings game next next week showing up in your Niners party. I mean, you're getting a couple fist pounds, maybe a couple head shakes too. That's the beauty of it. You never know. It's the beauty of the NFL. You never really know this. It's been a lot of ups and downs. Scoring is back up. You see a lot of field goals still. You know, actually, Rip, it's a mix. As I say it, I'm looking at some scores and some things from last week. It's still very much a mix of ups and downs. Life's been a mix of ups and downs. We have we have rumblings of, of the beginnings of what could be a terrible situation, maybe even a war situation in the Middle East, very scary stuff going on. We have kind of the standard fall deaths. I don't even like to say that, but it is. We, we Since we've been kids, we've said the, the death comes in three things. It's True, right, Rip? Is this this is the thing that people say? Do you believe in that? The death comes in threes? Is that silly? It feels like one of those things that people say, but for proof, I, I don't think it's actually true. I mean, you know, what, you're counting like within 72 hours. I mean, you can bend the numbers on that all you want, but hopefully we, we had Dikembe, our guy Dikembe, and then Pete Rose yesterday. So hopefully we see no more athletes, nobody else dying anytime soon. Yeah, there's a couple more. That's why I asked you, Rip. It's a jaded number. It's a jaded number. I think that's just a maybe it's a red car theory. Once you notice one death, you notice some other ones. But rest in peace uh, to Pete Rose. Interesting career to say the least. I don't know if he'll go down in history as a as a good guy, but he was an entertaining guy. That's for sure. Very entertaining. Never a big Pete Rose guy. I missed the generation. I was an '80s baby, so I missed that generation. Never a big gambler and. Wanted nothing to do with the city of Cincinnati outside of trying that spaghetti chili maybe one day. The seven way. It's on the list. A lot of people hate it. They think it's just the grossest concept ever. I'm very intri- intrigued by it at least. I think I would go probably the five way. Spaghetti. Chili. Definitely cheddar cheese. Onions for me. That's four. I'm going the four way, Rip. Got off track. Pete Rose. Rest in peace. Frank Fritz from American Pickers. I'm not gonna lie, that between King of Queens and American Pickers, it might be up there with my longest numbers of hours put into a rerun television show. I fucking loved American Pickers, Rip. Especially when they hit cities that I knew on the West Coast or areas that I knew. I was that was the TV show that got me closest to actually trying to go out and pick stuff. And I would think about it. I would get as close as getting into my car and thinking about going on knocking somebody's door to do a to do a pick through their garage. I'd never pulled the trigger. Rest in peace, Frank Fritz. You an American Pickers guy? You probably had a crush on that lady with the tattoos. 
I've never seen an episode. I don't even know who the person is that you're talking about. I'm just going to let you keep going. Uh, you kind of glossed right over our guy Dikembe there. I was going to finish with Dikembe. Fritz is an important guy, Rip. Frank Fritz is an important guy. No, you're not familiar with him. Kind of looks like the male version of a, of a turtle. He's a damn good picker, though. That man could buy some motorbikes in the backwoods of Iowa like nobody's business. Actually, I think he made more mistakes than W's. Frank was not as good as Mike. I'm still tangenting, Rip. And then the Ken made Matumbo, the one and only. Rest in peace. He was having a hard, hard last couple of years with cancer. So it's been tough. So he's he's not in pain anymore. A dear friend to so many people. So many people. I heard uh, Jeff Green, media day with the Rockets. It's crazy. He's playing basketball. He's 47 years old still. Guess what? He's suiting up for a Rockets team. Stay tuned to my NBA media stuff. I have some stuff on the Rockets. I really like them this year. But just as some really nice stuff about Deke and coming out of Georgetown and teaching him how to be a pro and then and then transferring it very quickly to the human side, which we did in our podcast with him too, because it's a lot of stuff you don't know about Matumbo that he's doing in Africa and that he's doing in the United States about making the world better. So rest in peace to a to a great one. It's always sad when when the really good guys who do great things uh pass. Rip, you got any thoughts on Dikembe? I have two more deaths. It's a death. We're going to, there's no guests this episode. And we've had two more that made me stop and think a little bit, Rip. But I'll, I'll break for, for any Matumbo memories or thoughts you have on that sweet man. Yeah, just for me, I mean, obviously we spoke to him for about 20 minutes three years ago, so so very small sample size. But the thing that kind of struck me is, like you mentioned, the, the the hospitals he's building in Africa, the schools, and people talk about leaving a legacy, and that stuff's going to be there forever, for years and years to come. So the other thing is that I don't think I've ever heard someone say something bad about him, which is pretty rare for any human. Like any, anyone, anytime you ever hear someone talk about Dikembe Mutombo, it's always happy it's always joyful it's always helping out so i've never heard anyone say anything bad about him uh 58 years old way too young for someone who still had a lot a lot of uh love and a lot of uh joy to spread so rest in peace to kembe will always remember had a, had me digging down a rabbit hole you and i text him back and forth those old youtube clips he gave you the finger wag so you always have that memory he gave you the finger wag on this podcast and uh yeah back when we Back when we were really just kind of starting out, poor, you talk about my headphones and mic now, super poor audio, uh, poor visuals, poor editing, everything. But Dikembe came on when when he didn't have to. We were just a dinky little pod back then. And uh, he spent 20 minutes with us. So uh, great guy from all accounts and, and will be missed by a lot of people. Such a good, a good sense of humor. The finger wag. We talked about his favorite uniform. He, he, he wore a lot of great uniforms during his time. But cancer, uh, Dikembe Mutombo, a legend. Um, thank you. Thank you, friend, for, for helping us and for helping others. Uh, you'll be missed. Rip one more guy. I got to keep doing it, though. But we lost John Amos, too. He was an actor. He spent some time in, in Long Beach. So I want to bring him up. He actually played football, Long Beach City College. And uh, another great actor. So death coming. I guess the only reminder I have of all this is enjoy the moments and pick up the phone if you have parents who are still alive, mom and dad in that phone, grandparents who are still alive, maybe friends or family. I do something that's kind of fun for me socially just to stay engaged with life. I do for every Friday, I'll send out some text messages, um, just sending positive vibes to random people in my cell phone who I haven't talked to in maybe 5, 10, 15 years. I encourage everybody when you get weeks like this, these kind of these deaths, weeks that are recognized to go that extra mile on that stuff. And Rip, we might as well go ahead and put the Jacksonville Jaguars to death too, because they're done as well. Um, wrap it up. Go ahead and put Devontae Adams off that Jags list. He's not going there. And uh, good luck next season to the Jacksonville Jaguars. The death talk is over though, Rip. Exciting. Let's shift over to NFL. You have any shift music? Can you give me a little quick, give me a quick freestyle to move into this next NFL section so we can change the vibe. There was a clear black night, a clear white moon. Warren G was on the streets trying to consume. Try, no, keep that in. We're trying to consume Tyreek Hill's attitude. Miami Dolphins have fully broken Tyreek Hill. It's done. He reminded me a lot, Rip. Please take no offense to this whatsoever because it's not your toddler that I'm talking of specifically. Many toddlers do the same thing. But he reminded me a lot on the sidelines when he was not happy yelling stomping his feet slamming things around 
it's like the entire neighborhood knows about it on the sidelines calling a, a lot of a lot of your toddler maybe three four years ago when he wasn't getting his way was what Ty, it feels like a broken man in that system right now who just needs to have a nap maybe eat a good meal maybe he needs a little screen time and to reset but that shit is broken in miami rip is is Am I is am I making that up? Am I this is too extreme? Obviously, no quarterback, so that's a problem. But lots of other problems there, and now the locker room is lost. Well, all he really needs is his quarterback back, like you said, and it sounds like Tua is Tua is going to be back in week eight, so he's going to be back in a couple of weeks. He's everyone, everything, everything you read says he's not considering retirement. If he gets another concussion, like a fourth or fifth one, then he's going to probably sit for a very lengthy period but sounds like they'll get him back in week eight but it might be too late what are they one and three right now it might be too late week eight they might be one and five one and six by then Mm -hmm. very much so very much a great example of an nfl team who has a terrible general manager why do i say that they spent so much money on these primary positions and you have a quarterback who is a serious concussion risk who can't afford to even get touched much less head knocked back and and concussed again and they did not upgrade any of that offensive line whatsoever they threw a lot of money in other areas but did not upgrade the one area that you need to protect this guy and now it's just a joke also how about not getting a backup quarter a backup quarterback guys like we're what are we doing what are we doing for me rip this exposed mike mcdaniels as not as smart as i thought he was maybe even a bit of a fraud his look and what he's trying to do with his whole look and aesthetic is rubbing people in Miami and people as far as Hawaii the wrong way, starting to to be smug. Nobody likes smug whatsoever. Is he in over his britches? This is this is th- these are his guys after three years. I think he is. In, I think he is in over his head. And, and like you said, it, it's a simple thing that teams just fail to do over and over. Look, look at the Colts. They they grab Joe Flacco. I mean, forty something years old. But he's a game manager. He can go out and win games if your starting quarterback gets hurt. That's all the Dolphins needed to do. Grab a Mariota, grab a Joe Flacco. Shit, bring Ryan Fitzpatrick out of retirement. You just need somebody that will hold it down while your starter's out. And the Dolphins and probably about 20 other teams don't have that right now. Very common sense in Miami. And you're right. A lot of teams don't have it. Miami is the number one glaring hole of that position of WTF. Like, what the fuck? What do you, what, what did you expect? What did you expect? So big problems in Miami. That thing is ass backwards and it's just going to get worse. It's just going to get worse because you have a lot of babies who are going to cry. They're not going to come together. They're not going to come together and find a way to make things right. They're going to complain until they can get a ticket out of town. Welcome to the new modern day professional athlete. Is there any way that when Tua comes back, he's not coming back in one of those guardian caps? That's my question. Is he is he coming back with just a normal helmet? He has to wear a guardian cap. Am I has crazy? Has to. Has to. He has to. He has to just sit Indian style anytime the pocket collapse. He can't run anymore. He can't do it. He he has proven that he doesn't know how to take hits. And I watch it every single week in the NFL. There's guys who know how to take. And I've said this before. I'm not going to say it again. But if you ever need to know how to take how to get down in the NFL, just look at surfers avoiding waves coming in. You got to get down. You got to move your body to the right, move to the left. You have to be more awareness. If not, you stay in the pocket and you sit down when problems happen and live to fight another day. Godspeed for that, man. I like him, but this is this is over. There's a lot of money. I think this thing is going to get completely blown up in Miami next year. Completely blown up. Everything that you see will look different next year. Baltimore Ravens rip back to two and two. The Ravens we all expected. We all got into a tizzy about this start. I mean, those were some terrible losses to the Raiders. The game where Likely's toe just barely went out of bounds. Things were shook in Baltimore. I was yelling. I was yelling on this podcast about not handing the ball off to Derrick Henry. I think they listened. He got the rock. They look stronger than the Bills on both sides of the ball. The Ravens are back. That was scary for a little bit. Everybody is moving in the right direction, except for friend of the pod, Mark Andrews, who apparently is just a a left tackle nowadays. Ravens back on track though, Rip. You feeling good about the Ravens now? Here we go. 
I am. I mean, we, you know, we have our wins pool with our guy Miguel uh, from Hawthorne, and, and they were my first round pick. They started out 0 2, but I feel like they're really going to be there in, in the end. And I, I think someone said it over the last couple of days. That was the most impressive win so far by any team of the season. Yeah. So beating, uh, beating that undefeated Bills team. So when they're on, they're on. Their defense is solid. They got a great coach, uh, great position player. So mm-hmm. I think uh, they got to be one of the favorites right now. I think that defense is back. They were flying around more so than ever. I picked them off the waiver wire for one of my fantasy leagues. I'm very excited about that. I think that stock was low, and uh, I'm all back in on the Ravens too. Good shit. The Bills, a little bit exposed, Rip, on defense. The loss of Milano, the middle linebacker in the preseason, is starting to come back to reality and be a huge holdout. Middle of the field for the Buff Buffalo Bills is a problem. Jordan Poyer, you're not it. Big problem. So if you have teams matching up against the Bills, look for overs in the bets. I think lots of points on both sides. Josh Allen's going to keep... Talk about a dude who knows how to take a hit. Josh Allen. Sometimes he's dumb, close to the end zone, usually close to the end zone, but in field to a take a look. Just learn how to fucking get down a little bit better like this guy Allen. But it's an Arizona Cardinal situation in Buffalo where offense is great and fun and composed and the defense is a wreck. So I would continue to uh, look at fantasy matchups against Buffalo D and overs. I think lots of points will keep getting scored when they're playing Justin Fields rip. He's going to get another start over Russ Wilson. This is starting to get kind of weird. Has to be the ultimate best case scenario for the Steelers to steal these wins early. Like they are without scoring touchdowns or scoring no touchdowns. I think they scored their first touchdown last week. Keeping a solid backup on ice. Russ is solid backup. That's a great backup. That's a backup Miami Dolphins that you want. The Steelers are very much on Devontae Adams' watch. There was a a tweet put out this morning, Tuesday, as we, we record here, with Antonio Pierce liking a comment saying that most likely Mr. Adams has played his last game. Talk about pouting like a toddler. Him and him and Hill. Adams is pouting. He's not eating chalupas at the Taco Bell in his house right now. He's in his garage pissed off and and hitting stuff. He's rocking. He's he's taking paint off cars. He's upset, Rip. He's upset. The Steelers, though. Good landing spot for Devontae Adams. Get some touchdowns going. I don't see why they need him, to be honest. Mike Tomlin is over there doing his thing. He knows how Pittsburgh wins games. It's it's defense and the running game. And just have your quarterback not make mistakes. And Fields hasn't been making a lot of mistakes so far. That's why they're winning. Uh, they got the Cowboys on Sunday night this week. So that'll be a big test. But if they come out of that, they got a few more winnable games coming up. We could be looking at a 7-1 and one team in a few weeks. So I don't think they need to make any changes. Why would you bring a guy like that into the locker room and give up a second-round pick for him? I, I think they just stand pat right now. Teams always make those mistakes. I mean, all the writing's on the wall that he's going to be a New York Jet. Rodgers wants them. They're going to get back together. That's going to happen sometime. I like the other teams throwing it around a little bit because it's fun talk. He will be a New York Jet. Mark my words. Mark the tape. He will be. Rip, tough injury for you. Tough injury for the Chiefs with Rice, although off the field, not, not very good shit. On the field, really hitting his stride. Nice length. Great speed, and his hands seem to be um, improved a lot this offseason for the Kansas City Chiefs. Here's a take for you. I talked about Tyreek Hill being unhappy, trying to catch passes from fucking Thompson and Durkin and whoever the whoever these quarterbacks are in Miami. Tyreek Hill rip leaving Patrick Mahomes. It could be the greatest mistake in NFL history, true or false. It could be. I mean, he didn't know Tua was going to get all these concussions, obviously. And Miami's a good landing spot. He loves it down there. But I saw fantasy god Matthew Berry tweeted yesterday. He threw it out there. What if the Dolphins trade Tyreek back to the Chiefs now? If Rashi rises out for a long period, who says no to that? Get some draft picks. Tyreek goes back into that offense that he knows so well, fills that Rashi Rice hole. Who says no to that? We, I, I would love to see that happen. Thank you, Rip. Took that in the direction I wanted it to go in. Yes, there you go. So that's the craziness of the NFL in these situations. Glaring holes are glaring holes that can be plugged with disgruntled players. As much as I, the old man in me, the, the as much as the get off my lawn guy, 
is saying just be happy with your team and stay it out and fight for it. That's not how sports work anymore. That's not how college sports work anymore. That's not even how AAU sports work anymore. If you're not getting everything you want in your sporting experience, you call just do a hissy fit until you land in a spot that works for you. I don't think it's healthy, but it's the way the system's going right now. It's a little depressing on all angles, but it is what it is. NFL talk, Rip, what else am I missing? You want to talk about the Cardinals and Daniels? You mentioned it. It's the same story that we're going to say week to week. Offense is decent. Defense is terrible. You can't lose win games that way. And then the commanders have a real one. This is this is real good. This is a more composed Lamar Jackson. If he did a lot of the pocket presence stuff and a lot of the scrambling stuff, uh, so much better against the Cardinals. Granted, this defense is really, really bad. This secondary, I feel so bad for Buda Baker. Maybe it's time to move him for some youngsters on defense because because he's still playing his heart out, but he can't do it all. He can't do it all for this defense. It's a tough watch, definitely on D. This is another situation with the Cardinals. Cardinals and the Bills locking it and over and, and, and locking a shitload of points to be scored every single week against them. However... It's super fun. Rip, super fun game of the week. You knew J Daniels was going to be good early, just like you always are in fantasy. You, you're pretty good at fantasy, and you knew Daniels was going to be good. If the Cardinals could have attacked him differently on defense, anything differently, any team for that matter, Rip, is there any way that you would play this guy as a defensive coach to slow him down or stop him as a rookie? I mean, the only thing I can think of is he's not going deep very often. He did in that Monday night game against the Bengals. He had two bombs, uh, one to McLaurin, one to uh, I can't remember who else, but they they both worked. And he he can throw the deep ball, but he hasn't been required to that much yet. So I would say sell out for the short passes because he's he's completing like 82 percent of his passes. Most of them are under 10 yards. So if you can have a guy shadow him over the middle, I, I mean, I'm no I'm no defensive coordinator, man, but he he's he's going to get figured out a little bit. But I think that's just going to unlock the uh, the deep threat. And he, he does throw a good deep ball. So I don't think it's going to phase him. I think it'll just unlock another part of his game. He's got the Browns at home. Coming up this week. So some good some good games, some buys coming up. Watch your fantasy lineup, make some moves. Uh, football, good stuff. It's getting better and better every week, like it always does. And I'm happy to see the scoring pick up and uh, kickers not having 21, 22 points as much anymore. Major League Baseball, touch point rip for you. Arizona Diamondbacks have clinched time off with their families and spiny lobsters in Cabo. And fruity oh drinks at the pool. Um, it was a decent run. I, it's never good when you don't control your own destiny. It's fun to be in it in baseball in the final because it's not a lot of teams make it. We'll talk about the wild card and the postseason picture here a little bit. It's tough to make the MLB postseason as it is. So proud, proud of the Diamondbacks. You know, we're fighting a little bit for that renovation and that stadium upgrade in downtown Phoenix we talked about last week on the show. So this doesn't help that. As much, maybe I put a little bit of a DK court curse on too last week when I, when I was talking about them clinching already. I got too excited. It was a crazy finish, Rip. I mean, congratulations to the Mets. Wow, 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 wow! What a game against the Braves. Lindor with an MVP performance. Wow, wow, that was good baseball. Did you watch that with your kids, Mister Baseball Coach? That was a great fucking game. I think they were still in school and that that one was on, but uh, they definitely saw what happened in the ninth inning there. And yeah, the Mets have been on a run, man. I wouldn't be surprised if they beat the Brewers in, in the wild card here. Mm, I like that. Yeah, let's talk about that. So you got the Mets being the Brewers. Uh, Brewers, a little slept on team up there. You don't hear a lot about them, uh, but very mid, in my humble opinion. We got Braves and the Padres. Good matchup down in San Diego. San Diego's fun. Seems like San Diego's the funnest baseball. Seems like San Diego might be funnest city. Is that crazy? Does that hit you in any way? This might be a funnest, the funnest city in the country. Funnest that, city, be most beautiful city. I don't think you could go wrong with San Diego. The, Rip agreed. I thought you were going to hubba da hubba da hubba me and try to pick another place. It's just great vibes. And now they got some MLB postseason going. Uh, Detroit, Houston, sad day for Verlander. Remember, Verlander was so good. Life was treating him so good. Didn't even make the postseason roster. But they're, they're going against a Detroit team that many people put to sleep. The Jacksonville Jaguars put him to sleep. And guess who's guess who's 
Guess who's leading that team with Riz and Vibes from Arizona State? Former one-star recruit, Rip Spencer Torkelson. If you want to call hitting 220 leading a team, go for it. I mean, he's part of that team for sure, but they they got, have you ever heard Tarek Skubal from Kingman, Arizona, the best pitcher in MLB right now? Skubal, Skubal. Rip, I didn't say best numbers. I said best vibes and riz, Rip. You did he, did he change did he change his walk up song to loser no. song? Is that what happened? He's just matured. He grew out of his baby face. He put on a bit of his man face. I think life has to kick you in the nuts for a while sometimes for it to kick in when you've been great your whole adolescence and uh we'll see if this guy can turn up in the postseason my sleeper pick for going deep is this detroit team and i think torque's gonna be a big part of that you need clutch moment wins you need moments like lindor did for the mets in the ninth inning to make the playoffs all over the place and then kansas city baltimore a lot of orioles fanboys and fan women out there best Logo in baseball. Nobody talks about it. And uh, we'll see. So I got the Tigers. Rip likes the Mets. Huh? Mets to get through in the wild card. Mets to get through in the wild Mets are hot. Mets are hot. But the money, would, the would, Sharps. Would, Go ahead. I would love to see the Tigers. I would love to see a Tigers Padres World Series, to be honest. But fun fact our, our guy Winston here just pulled for us. The Padres are the oldest team in MLB without a World Series title. They've been one of the hottest teams since the All-Star break, if not the hottest. So I'd love to see it happen. Probably terrible for ratings, but San Diego, Detroit, World Series. Let's go. Wow, 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 wow. A lot of the Sharps like Houston back in there. And San Diego, if they can get through, they're going to have a tough go here, Rip. They're going to have to probably fight through the Dodgers and the Phillies. The same old, same old. D-backs did it last year. The D-backs did it last year. Padres. I like Padres Astros. Let's go with Detroit. Mix it in there for a little Torkelson fun. MLB talk right there, Rip. Well done. Not bad for your baseball guy. Big baseball guy. NBA media day. It's a fun day in the NBA because it, it simply means new season is officially here. It's the time when you get to see guys in new uniforms for the first time. You get to see summer bodies uh, either got fat in shape or neither so that's interesting aesthetically for nba junkies a little bit some interesting pop outs to me that jumped out at me uh chicago bulls two things for the chicago bulls a night dedicated to honor derrick rose i love that i love derrick rose i i wish he's one of those guys i wish had some more success along the way in in terms of of actually um Getting some more championships and injuries got the worst of him. Just love D Rose. I think it's part of the time when I I was my maxing my basketball love and fanship. Great move by the Bulls. That's on January fourth. They're gonna make it a whole Derrick Rose weekend. Zach Levine, same team, showed up to media day. I got some inside information that he's now a proud member at. He's now a proud member of the Shady Canyon Private Golf Club in Orange County, California. And I had information before media day that he was showing up to that interview and to secure membership there, looking like a completely different, different man, uh, new body, new, new, new swag. And he's hanging out with a lot of olders word on the street is he's cut a lot of his friend circle out from his youth. And he's transferring his time to hanging out with a lot of older, successful people who are doing great things. And then he showed up to media day today and Rip, he looked like a new man. Winston, can you send over that clip to Rip so he can check it out? He looks like a new man. He talks like a new man. Um, I'm very excited about the new Zach Levine, and I did not expect that whatsoever, uh, Rip. So, so, so keep an eye on that. He kind of looks like he's got a weird Clay Thompson meets um, – God, his body looks better than ever. No Diddy uh, to, to be the leader of that Bulls team. Who knows? Everything else is young on that squad, but it jumped out at me. Uh, Zach Eady and John Morant down in Memphis have coupled up. Rip, I know you love that. You send me a picture every week of Zach Eady doing something fun in, in Memphis, eating barbecue, taking pictures at media day. You love that? Is, that? is that coupling, the coupling that everybody needed in the NBA? We didn't even know it. It reminds me of that Danny DeVito, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. What was that Twins or something? Because it just two very different looks, uh, short and tall, you know, whatever, giant and non-giant, just... Very odd pairing, and to me, if, if Zach Eadie's one of your uh, your your main guys on media day, you might be in a little trouble this season. Call me crazy. Oh, Grizzlies are going to be a complete coin flip, but 
exciting and doing stuff like this. Super tall man, super athletic John Morant. Let's mix it up. Let's see. Uh, interesting. Mark it up as interesting. Year 16 for Steph and Golden State's going to start. My expectations are pretty low for this Golden State Warriors team. And my, my gut tells me that this is the last year for Steph in the Bay Area. I know he signed a two-year deal. My gut tells me and my instincts... I'm gonna. I'm going with on this podcast. Say so he's gonna finish his career in Charlotte with his pops calling the games. Uh, I think that all kind of makes sense. But this is the this is the year where the Warriors come back fully to reality and realize that they're gonna have to blow this thing up. And and Steph and Draymond just aren't what they used to be. Golden State Warriors rip playoff team or no? Ooh, that's a tough one. I mean, I agree with your assessment. I, I think they might squeeze into that eight eight or nine seed or maybe the play-in again. But, yeah, I think it's uh, definitely trending down over there in Golden State. Unless unless one of those guys like Kuminga or Moses Moody somehow takes a huge leap, I think, yeah, I think they're looking at play-in at best. Yeah, I, those guys just aren't the huge leap type of guys. Those are great role players on winning basketball teams. And that's draft. That's since Bob Myers left. That's Mr. Dunleavy. And very nervous. Lots of we'll see going on in Golden State. Also, the swag at Chase Center in San Francisco, that building, is not what Oracle was eight, nine years ago. And San Francisco needs to find that again. They need to find the energy in the building. I know things are very expensive and they, the tech bros and people wearing uh, cardigans and sweater vests. And uh, I don't even know what tech bros wear for shoes. I was going to say hokas, but probably better shoes. Uh, let's get some real fans back in there and get this thing going again. We told our guy Rossi to move to uh, Elk Grove and start working for the Kings about two years ago. So don't say we didn't warn you, Andrew Rossi. Things help. Sure things happening up in Sacramento. We'll talk about them uh, in the coming months when we do some more NBA takes. Very excited, though. Media day-wise, interesting about the Houston Rockets. Amon Thompson, also a uh, one-star recruit alumni. Great young dude. It's going to have a huge year. Jalen Green will have his sauciest year yet. I think he's developing as a man a little bit more. So we're going to get some sauciness from Jalen Green. I don't know what that means. I just think it means swag. And he, I don't know what that means, but it's fun when I say that in NBA terms. And they got old man Jeff Green giving it one more go. So you got the old get one for Jeff Green thing going in Houston. I think they're going to be a surprise team, make that playoff. Maybe that playing game we talked about. And uh, who knows with a great head coach, what can happen in Houston? Get excited. If I was in Houston, the metropolitan area, Galveston, uh, I would get a mini plan. I would get a mini plan. I would see the Phoenix Suns. I would see John Morant and Zach Eady. And I would definitely make sure that I'm seeing Clay when he comes with that new uniform and the Dallas Mavericks. Big Clay Thompson showing up. Phoenix Suns rip. I'm excited about Booker. The coolest thing that I saw about Media Day that had to do anything with the Phoenix Suns and Devin Booker was that Mikel Bridges showed up, and he guess what he's going to play in? The Devin Booker ones. Devin Booker is getting respect, bro, in the world and in the NBA. NBA players are wearing his, his shoes the way that NBA players wore Kobe's shoes. They're the best. They're the coolest. He's the guy. You're the guy, Dev. You're the guy. Unfortunately, you're not the guy with the biggest swag in Phoenix anymore on the basketball side of things. That belongs to Frank the Tank, Kaminsky. Welcome back, big Frank. Rip, what are your expectations for the Suns? I'm going to flow that right into uh, one-star moments of the week here because you're infringing on my on my one-star moment of the week right here. And it's just really, uh, I'll talk about the expectations for the Suns, but my one-star moment of the week is just in general being an Arizona sports fan. Like we talked about, D-backs had a horrible way to end the season, kind of shot themselves in the foot and miss the postseason I, to me it's 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 not that big of a deal honestly because i feel like they probably would have, would have lost the wild card series anyway so it's just kind of postponing the inevitable but cardinals we got one and three they're going at the 49ers on sunday so to me again we're like you said we're staring down maybe about a five or six win season again just just perpetual losing seasons for this team uh, your Coyotes are, are moved to Utah, so we don't even need to talk about them. They're no longer an Arizona team. And the Suns are all we got left right now. There's a little bit of a reason to be optimistic, like you said. But to me, I just kind of have this bad feeling that, that we'll be talking in May about how they lost in the playoffs again, even with this super team and, and bringing in a real point guard in Tyus Jones. 
I do love that guy a lot. I've loved mm-hmm. him for a few years, but it's just it's just been a bad week and really a bad life to, to be an Arizona sports fan. So just uh, venting a little bit, but one star moment of the week, it just kind of all hit ahead this week. So I hope the Suns do well, man, but I, I expect the worst, hope for the best, as always. It's a very fair rip. Very fair. This is it's hard. It's a hard life out here. Biggest free agents pickups in the state of Arizona is your guy, Tyus. You've wanted him for a while. And Bucky's coming to the Valley. And that's kind of sad. That's not helping us win championships, you know, just get a little fatter. I'm all for it. But uh, two biggest pickups of the year. We'll see. I get a mini plan. I'll tell you that much. I get a mini plan. This could be the last year of getting Kevin Durant at any type of level that's acceptable for superstar status. Changing on the guard, Rip. They talk a lot about the silver tsunami coming in the United States. A lot of people getting older and 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 businesses being transferred to taking care of the elderly and doing things with old people. It's happening in the NBA. The LeBron era, the Steph era, the KD era. It's coming to a close. So enjoy it. If you have young children, this is the time. To, I, if I, this is the third time I'm going to say mini plan. It's like saying Beetlejuice three times. I'm going to turn into a season ticket rep if I say it one more time, dude. Uh, but this is the time to get mini plans to go see those guys I just named because then they won't be playing anymore. And then your kids will be in a podcast 25 years later talking about how cool their dad is because they took them to see Steph Curry in his last year. The same way we talk about seeing Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, Charles Barkley, Clyde Drexler. Kevin Johnson, Mark Price. Come on, give me one rip. Dan Marley. One star moment of the week for me. Doing parlays with other people is so stupid. It's the stupidest thing I've ever tried or thought of. I'm doing a parlay, football parlay program with our sponsor 500 level on the Trash Talk Boys podcast. Although fun, it's so stupid. You're asking for disaster. Because no, it's like doing a group project in high school and one person does all the work and you just, and you, and you just turn it in, but the other people in the group still have to stand up and give their synopsis. And it's so clear and evident who's doing good work and who isn't doing good work, Rip. There's one more to go in this parlay before our sponsorship's up. We've spent all our money on losses. I need... I need a good one, Rip, although I am 2-0. and I'm the only successful one in this whole thing, which is making me think, maybe I should just make my own parlay bets and not count on these other dingbats to make bets with me. So the rest of the crew is 1-4. and four. I'm 2-0. and oh. One-star moment. Don't do parlay bets with other humans. Stupid. I think that's a great idea. I, I've always been anti-parlays. It's it's just not a winning proposition. I'm always, you know me, I'm always take the game you feel the strongest about and put all your money on that game or 80% of your money on that game. So I think no disrespect to the to the TTB crew, but I think you should branch out on your own. I think it's time, DK. I do know a bit. I do know a bit. I'm taking this one a little bit more seriously, and I put in some time. I've gotten two winners. A train's going to burn you, and I don't. I mean, this guy picked fucking, this guy picked the, the Eagles, Tampa Bay, which was, that's why the NFL is crazy. I would have done the same thing. There's no way you're picking Tampa Bay to beat the Eagles, Rip. Are you? Come on, last week. Come on, are you? I did. I told my son Sunday morning. I said, I have a feeling uh, Tampa's going to win this game outright. No money, no tell. You're telling your son. You could just make you could just made that up, Rip. You don't. You didn't see anything coming from Tampa Bay. Although Ray Lewis effect, right? All of a sudden, within a week's moment in time, you're playing for something much bigger than a football game. You're playing for your city. Who we just went through a horrendous storm. Yeah, yeah. Ray Lewis effect. Rip, you why don't you text us when you have these insights? So it's on so it's on one star paper or text our guy train so he stops making bad picks. Maybe you can send him a couple picks. So I'm sick of losing. We got one more go at it. Trash talk boys, sporty boys, parlay of the week brought to you by 500 levelcom One star Rex of the week, Rip. Go ahead. What do you got? Yeah, mine is just uh it's you know, seeing these uh pictures and videos from from the southeastern u.s from from north carolina tennessee all these towns wiped out by by hurricane i, I think it's i don't know how to say it, hurricane Hel- helene helena whatever it is just reminded me of uh, last year which you went through in the in the devastation of the lahaina fires and so the wreck of the week is really there's a ton of people that need help 
So uh, if you can, if you're able, if you have 20 bucks, 50 bucks, 100 bucks, donate to the Red Cross. I think that's the organization kind of always leading the charge down there like it was in uh, in Hawaii when you were out there in, uh, in Maui. But so, yeah, it's just, you know, there's like you said, we got Iran invading Israel, all this, this and that. So they'll probably need donations, too. But right now, uh, I've seen a lot of crazy videos coming out of the southeast and, and just full towns underwater, just totally wiped out. So. Very sad stuff. Uh, I know you went through it last year, so you, you probably know better better than anyone. But yeah, it's just uh, donate if you can. That that's the record of the week. Cosign donations are are so good. Help out. More importantly, if there's somebody specifically in your life who might have been affected, who is displaced in their car or at a high school or at a shelter, a text message goes a long way. Uh, maybe some direct assistance to them too, in the form of a Venmo or a Zelle or something along those those lines can be a direct help but yeah Asheville rip the smoky mountains like it the, the same thing that happened to Lahaina a year ago it, the a city got leveled cities got leveled cities are no more it's scary it's scary to the point too where i think you're going to keep seeing these natural disasters get a little bit worse until we adjust and change as, as humans and our infrastructure and where we decide to live uh, very scary in this moment of us trying to figure it all out. And then along the, the same lines, insurance costs are going through the roof, making it almost impossible. Uh, Godspeed to everybody who's gone through a natural disaster. We are setting as victims, as people who have been through it. I speak for myself who was through this one last year. As hard as it is, as it is have a little bit of solace in knowing that what we're going through now, we're going to learn from, get better. And as we grow as a country, as humans, as as people who are kind to one another, uh, hopefully we can get better at, at being better at these problems when they do happen, whatever that means. Reaction time, support time, money time, FEMA time. Uh, hopefully we can keep getting better because it's going to keep happening, unfortunately, Rip. I think it's just going to keep happening. Uh, it's the world that we live in. Uh, one star recommendation of the week for me, it can be found at Costco. It can be found uh, in the islands, but definitely at Costco. So Google Costco, Costco and Way Cocoa Water. So W-A-I, cocoa is spelled K-O-K-O, -K -O, coconut water, 100% coconut water rip. I found it recently because I was struggling with some cramping and some electrolyte stuff during days when I was getting a little bit more over five miles of, of movement in and cramping a little bit, just wasn't finding a good solution. The liquid IVs aren't doing it for me. I don't know fully and I don't like them. I don't like, I don't like the flavor of them. So I got into a little Google hole and I figured out that coconut water is a great uh, a great way to get a boost of energy, quick electrolyte hitter, and a couple of other minerals and vitamins in your body. Uh, if you get the right kind, did some research, of course. Of course, Costco comes up in that bad boy and uh, brought it back. You drink it chilled, so chill it. It's got 90 calories, only eight grams of sugar. It's natural sugar and a shitload of electrolytes. And this coconut water tastes as close as the real thing from live coconuts, which is kind of like a watered down cereal milk. Uh, very delicious, very refreshing. WAI, cocoa, coconut water. Recommendation of the week. Get some, bro. I think your kids will like it. I think it can actually be a substitution for a sweet drink that's semi-healthy, that, uh, that is not soda, but still has a very cool can. Still is really cool, um, but not soda. So there you go, Rip. I feel like it's possibly the second time you recommended a coconut water in the last few weeks, but uh, hey, yeah, I'll, I'll go. I, I was doing natural coconut water from an actual small dude who produces them, and he was putting them in in mason jars. Great, just incredibly, incredibly expensive and not sustainable. And this was my second option that I found that's more easily available and more consistent, if you will. But it's good shit, coconut water. Anybody out there who's doing a lot of soda? and still needs feel like they need sugar for pick me up a little sweet or a little thing uh go ahead go in that direction you can thank me later rips reacts hit the music big 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 weekend for the city of berkeley college football is coming to cal rip for the first time ever home of one star basketball coach mark madsen we gotta get mad dog back on the show Berkeley's coming up, dude. Berkeley's on the up and up. Cheese board for me. And Chez Panisse, the best restaurants in Berkeley. I do love Top Dog, too. I know Aaron Rodgers loves, loves Top Dog as well. Rip, what's the best thing about Berkeley, California to you? 
Cheese boards and Shea Panie. I'm going with you. I've never spent any time in Berkeley. The, the best thing I saw about this matchup this weekend, they're, they're calling it Woke versus Coke. Like Woke Berkeley versus Cocaine and, and <laughs> at the U. Uh, hey, it's going to be an entertaining matchup. Uh, go Bears. Woke versus Coke. This is a must watch uh, for us because exactly that, Rib. You have, you have, you have uh, vinegar and oil in these two programs going at it. Should be interesting. Berkeley. Berkeley stock on the rise. Invest. Invest in Berkeley. Gonzaga's leaving the WCC rip, headed to the Pac-12, who's going all in on being a powerhouse basketball conference. End of an era in Spokane. Rip, top three Gonzaga players. Got to go Adam Morrison, uh, number one. He's player of the year, I believe. Uh, number two, Corey Kispert. I think he was a, an All-American a couple times out there. Had a long career, high-scoring guy. Successful in the NBA, former one-star. And number three, let's go, uh, I'm going to bring up, because uh, I can't remember, I'm going to go Julian Strother, who's uh, on the Denver Nuggets, had a couple good games last year. An up-and-comer. He was really good at Gonzaga the last couple years. I'm going to take my guy, Roni Terry off. Roni, we still need you on the pod. I'm working on it with with Kevin Dana. We're going to figure it out eventually. Roni, thanks for all your support. Uh, over the years, uh, but Gonzaga, see you later. Pac-12, it's going to really hurt some teams like St. Mary's Rip, some of these teams that rely on that Gonzaga matchup, home and away, week to week, but things are getting crazy in college football. We know, listen back to any of our athletic director podcasts, more coming, by the way, with those as well as this world continues to get crazier and crazier. You just watched the kid at UNLV Leave because he didn't get his 100000 bucks. rip. I'm out of here. Taking my stuff and I'm going home. See ya. New Balanced. Your favorite shoe. Did you get those those blimpy shoes? I did not. I still am rocking the Hoka's. I'm still loyal to Hoka. Loyal to the oil, baby. Loyal to the oil. New Balance. Put it on your list. This is maybe... You're not going to even be able to get those, so whatever. Dropped a new ad to welcome uh, Shohei Otani to the 50-50 club. Word on the streets is we might have a 50-50 New Balance LA Dodgers, Dodgers Shohei Otani exclusive. Does that do anything for you? I am so anti-Dodgers. I'm not buying anything that's affiliated with that team, no matter what brand it is, or Otani. Uh, go Padres, like I said. No, that does not do anything for me. It makes me not want to buy any New Balance, DK. Manchester United released plans for a 2.6 billion with a B stadium district. So residential, entertainment properties, expansion of Old Trafford Stadium to 100,000 seats, making it the biggest in the Premier League. Entertainment districts that have been successful. They tried it in New England. Jerry's World tried it down in Dallas. Rip, what's the most successful version of sports entertainment districts that you've been to? I'm always going downtown San Diego in that gas lab district. If it counts, they built the stadium like 100 feet from all those hotels and restaurants. I don't know if that was planned or not, but it's right on the water. And it might not be one of these uh, Manchester United or, or Iowa State ones that's coming up, but I think it's one of the best. And like you said, San Diego, finest city, most beautiful city, best fun city. Can't go wrong with that one. It's a San Diego episode. The whale's vagina. It's a great place, man. It's a great place, Rip. Wonderful podcast, man. Cardinals, got them Niners. This is a good time to get the Niners. Cardinals, I would really like to see a W right now. I'm going to hop right back on. I'm going to get right back on the train again. I was on at week one. I got off a little bit. I'm hanging I'm hanging out back over, in, uh, over by Tempe Town Square, over by Arizona Mills Mall, thinking about getting some Chiba Hut. But I'm ready to hop back on the train if we can get a W here, especially in division rip especially in division McCaffrey's still in Germany I think the time is now come on Cardinals so hard to see Cliff Kingsbury come in and get a W especially like that with a quarterback that was really tough pill to swallow good pill to swallow though good shit coming up for the month of October Dallas Cowboys legend you gotta you gotta be tuned in this month like and subscribe five stars Dallas Cowboy Legends of Legends. We have them coming on. Uh, we're going to go dig into the chefs. We're going to go get back some some chefs, Rip. We have to talk about Thanksgiving, Halloween, 
and the holidays. The time has come. We need some ideas and we're 40 year old men who now need ideas. You need ideas for gifts. You also need some ideas for what you're going to bring to your smorgasbord banquet in your neighborhood for Thanksgiving. So we're going to have some chefs on. Give us five stars. Adam Scheffler. Woj is gone. Any thoughts, Rip, on who's going to take Woj's space? Shams. It's all about Shams. Sham Wow, Sham Cloth, Sham Five Stars. We'll see you next week. One love, one stars. Take it easy. See you next week.